Winners of seven in a row to open 2023, Minnesota Aurora returns to TCO Stadium, and so do the fans for this Saturday night showdown with Bavarian United. Along with former NWSL forward Danny Foxhoven Young, I'm Jake Griffith. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 9 Plus. Minnesota, the second highest scoring team in the USLW. Their balance has been on display all year. No better example than Wednesday night. Five goals from four different scorers. Absolutely. Wednesday was a real test of mentality for Minnesota Aurora. They managed to score five goals by four different players, even though they were playing indoors due to air quality issues. It was a wonderful team performance, but Hannah Adler was the standout player for me. She will be again tonight. Bavarian United, they've had a little bit of a struggle out of the gates, just two, two and one in their last five matches. We had to break here on Fox 9 Plus. We'll take a look at how these sides line up on Pride Night in Egan, Minnesota. It's Pride Night at TCO Stadium. And we'll see Pride-themed memorabilia and gear all around TCO. And as we take a look at Kevin Jonas from Avenues for Youth for the coin toss for our Pride celebration this evening. Danny, as we take a look at the starting 11 for both these teams, we start with the home side, Minnesota Aurora. They rolled out their new formation last match. Nicole Lukic liked what she saw. What can we expect from this 3-6-1 tonight? Yeah, she is clearly loving the 3-6-1. A lot of mentality going forward, a lot of focus through the midfield, and a solid three-back 
center back position, uh, which is really unique, but she clearly likes it and is sticking with it, and it, it is obviously working. So I see, I see no reason to make a change. As for Bavarian United, we mentioned in our broadcast open, been a tumultuous last couple games coming off the loss against Chicago Dutch Lions midweek. They've been using four central midfielders the last couple of matches. How can they combat the 3-6-1? Well, four central midfielders might pose a, a really difficult uh, s strategy against Minnesota Aurora because Minnesota is playing six in the midfield, which essentially is almost four also in that central area. So it might work out to be a really good matchup against these two sides. I'll be really curious to see as this is the first time meeting each other in club history. So it'll be really a fun game for them to be able to see what this is going to be all about. Aurora all-time at TCO Stadium, 10-1-1 and one at home. They've won six of their last seven matches. That is not including Wednesday night's fixture, considering that was played at the St. Croix Valley Indoor Center. However, in terms of goal scoring, it still counts toward their total. Now outscoring opponents 47-8 here in Egan, Minnesota. That is a whopping statistic. Yeah, that was a it was a pretty interesting night for everybody. I think both teams, both Green Bay and Minnesota Aurora were just happy that a game was able to happen. It did get moved indoors without the fans, which is a really big part to this Minnesota Aurora side, especially to the home home game um, advantage. Green Bay obviously was coming in. That's a real close rivalry. The teams are very familiar with each other. So it being moved in a completely indoor environment without the fans was a really unique situation. Minnesota Aurora ended up coming out on top and was really happy with their performance, winning 5-0. to zero. As I said, four goals, excuse me, four of the four different players scoring goals in that game, which was really impressive. And I think we're going to see a lot of that again tonight. As for Bavarian United playing on the road for just the third time this year, a small sample size, but they have seemingly been stronger away from home than they have been at home. They've only allowed two shots on goal away all season long as the whistle sounds, and we are underway at TCO Stadium. Bavarian United in the all-white, Minnesota in the all-teal kits, and Bavarian with the throw. Bavarian's results so far this season, and granted, it is their inaugural season, so they're still trying to figure out who they are, what their identity of their team is, but their results have been pretty up and down. They've been inconsistent. It's hard to tell what team you're going to get when you face them and what mentality and strategy you're going to get when you face them. So Nico Coach Le Nicole Lukic has a real has a challenge for her today because it's kind of like, how do we plan for this team? We're not really sure yet. Aurora will have the throw, as it looked like Wynn was going to take it. Instead, we'll leave it for a teammate. Just looking at the last five matches for this Bavarian team, a draw with Chicago City, back-to-back -back wins against RKC Third Coast and Rochester FC, and then, as we mentioned, the surprising midweek loss to Dutch Lions. Those results do make sense for the Chicago City. Chicago City is obviously in second place of this league, uh, is a really impressive team, obviously a very strong defensively and attacking-minded team. Um, the surprising one was more against Dutch Lions. That was more of a level set for Bavarian, and I think everybody was a little bit surprised by that result. So again, it'll be interesting to see what team we get tonight from Bavarian. As for Minnesota, as Aurora trying to clear the lines here, and so far cannot. Good high attacking press here for Bavarian. Aurora still can't clear the lines. A chance here for Bavarian, and they bang it off the post and in. Bavarian United silences the sellout crowd. An early strike. This goal came from Minnesota Aurora's state mistakes along the back line. That was a quick giveaway right in front of the 18. In this replay here, Abby Ostrom kind of just give it up at the top of the 18. Players weren't tracking back. Kelsey Capuzzi lost track of her man as well. It bounced off the 
stops the post there and just an easy finish. The Pacific Tiger, Haley Johnson, her third goal of the season for the first time in 2023, Minnesota playing from behind. And as we get a whistle and a foul, free kick upcoming. And just two minutes into the game here, almost three minutes. So this is by far the earliest that Minnesota Aurora has had to play from behind. A lot of games still in front of them, a lot of time to come back, a lot of time to score. We know how quickly Minnesota Aurora can score. Uh, but saying in saying that, this is already a, a small hill for them to climb. One thing Nicole Lukic talked about when we caught up with her earlier this week, the idea that the crowd could play a factor, how that could either do Bavarian in or motivate them even more by playing in an atmosphere like this. Safe to say, early, it has motivated them. They are on the front foot. Absolutely. This playing in front of a crowd like this is a really unique situation for a lot of these players. It's not something that they get to do day to day. It's not something they get to do even at their own home field. So coming here and playing under the lights in front of a sellout crowd, like you mentioned, just brings energy no matter what. And sometimes that energy can work in your favor or against you. And tonight, Minnesota Aurora is coming out a little bit on their heels. That ball cleared away. Last match for Minnesota held Green Bay without a shot on goal in the first 45 minutes. We'll recycle that ball over to Kafusi near side. Another thing that we had talked about with Coach Lukic is the fact that both of Minnesota Aurora's previous two games, so against Green Bay and against Chicago City, were on fields that were smaller than regulation size, uh, Chicago City being even smaller than the indoor field was. Here's a win. Can't swing past the last defender. And what Coach Lukic said will be really interesting going into tonight is that this field is bigger and this is going to be the first time they're going to be able to see if this formation has any exposures where is minnesota aurora going to be exposed and i will say bavarian exposed them very early on with a mistake being made where there wasn't cover behind the ball and lo and behold bavarian capitalizes on that Win tries to flick that one on. You mentioned the lack of cover behind. That's something that Nicole Lukic has lauded her team for, about always having at least one extra player back to sort of clean up mistakes if, if there is one. And as you mentioned, we see not there that time, an uncharacteristic mistake. Yeah, we have seen them feel really comfortable and confident with having their center backs with their foot on the ball more than I think many center backs are used to. We've seen it time and time again where they're jump starting the attack, if you will, and oftentimes being more of the tempo on the field of let's hold the ball across our back line, pass it, pass it, pass it until we're ready to go. I think this was a moment where Ostrom got a little bit too comfortable with that, tried to play out of the back, and it just exposed her team because there was nobody ready to cover in that particular moment. Bavarian back on it now here, moving with pace. Tried to whip that ball in, and it's a corner one. No, deflected off of Bavarian for... Looked as though there was some confusion down on the field. It will be a goal kick. Everyone thought it was a Bavarian corner. Glad to know I'm not alone. <laughs> Must have been a, a very small deflection there at the end. We all missed it. Win runs out of room. They will have the throw, and it's quickly taken. So far this match, I would say this is probably the 
least amount of possession that we've seen Minnesota Aurora have this early in a game. Typically, we see them with almost 90% of the possession, moving the ball, going forward. Oftentimes, they're on the other side of this and already have a goal early on in the game. So this is a little bit of a different start from what we're usually used to seeing with Minnesota Aurora. They definitely need to get their energy and momentum going. Stone nearly ridden off the ball there. Played back to Kafusi. And that is where she'll guide that back to Amanda Poorball. Aurora backtracking now. So far, definitely Minnesota Aurora are playing a little bit slower than usual. They're taking too many touches individually on the ball three four five touches before trying to pass and oftentimes bavarian is getting a foot in the way just disrupting that pass so i think at this point minnesota or if i were coach lukic i'd be saying we need to get the ball moving one or two touches bavarian couldn't settle it off the throw minnesota will take back possession on this near touch line. Bavarian doing a good job right now of giving Aurora almost a taste of their own medicine with a high press of their own, and it really has Minnesota out of sorts. I completely agree with that. That four midfield idea by Bavarian is working out very well for them. It's almost cutting off all of the midfielders of Minnesota Aurora, which is where we typically see them play from the back line through the midfield out to the other side of the field. Those areas are being cut off by Bavarian right now, and it's actually forcing them to play down the flanks a lot, which is really a tight area. And then Minnesota Aurora is taking one, two, three, too many touches, which is just slowing the play down a lot and making it really difficult for them. Bavarian with another chance here. Can they run it down? As that ball heads for the corners, and Tiana Harris able to win it back. Bavarian invited to shoot. That shot goes sailing over from Haley Block, and it's out for a poor ball goal kick. Bavarian is also playing with two higher forwards, and they're kind of just sitting right in between the outside backs and the center back, between Ostrom and Kafusi, and then obviously Tiana Harris, which is actually making it really hard for them even to connect around the back line, uh, again, which is where Minnesota Aurora typically likes to keep possession. And then that jump starts their attack, and, and that's making it really difficult for them to play out of the back right now. Wickers with it, surrounded by three white shirts. And now here's Eli Rapp. No choice for Stone but to go back to poor ball. Rapp wants to play Hansen into space, and she will. Good build up for Minnesota. The cross back into the mixer, win. That shot blocked, and it will be a Minnesota corner kick. There's a little bit more of the Minnesota Aurora we like to see. Maya Hansen with a great slicing run to the outside there, just behind the back line, getting to the end line. A good ball back across the box. Good strike by Mariah Wynn. I don't know if it would have gone in, but good strike. In swinging ball, gloved down by Chloe Olsen, the... Minneapolis, Minnesota native, sophomore at Marquette. Making her fourth straight start for this Bavarian United team. Adler wins it back. That corner we just saw for Minnesota, the 60th of the season for Aurora, averaging almost eight and a half per match. Very dangerous play headed back toward Olsen, and she's able to scramble to grab that. 
Chloe Olsen, you can see, is very comfortable with coming off the line, almost trying to call her defender off there. A little bit of a miscommunication on who had the ball, but uh, at the end of the day, she, she had it covered. Flag comes up on the near side. Aurora in an offside position. Interesting thing about Chloe Olsen, not only was she a four-time letter winner in soccer in high school, she also was the kicker on her high school's football team. Elena Zukowski slow to get up, but does get up after the challenge. Well, one of the things that we have talked about for goalies is they have to be good with their feet. So, uh, you know, it makes sense that she would want to be a kicker. <laughs> that those two skills translate. Lob that ball over the top does Bavarian. Here's a onside run for Johnson, and it's cleared out. Johnson finds Zukowski. That ball whipped in and sent wide. Does deflect off an Aurora player. That will be the second corner for Bavarian United. Bavarian is doing a really good job of isolating Minnesota Aurora's players individually and then beating them one on one. Whipped to the back post and headed just wide of the far post. It has been all Bavarian so far, including the early goal. They have dominated the possession early. Yeah, I would agree with that. They definitely have higher energy right now. They're playing a little bit faster. Defensively, they're making it really difficult for Aurora to play out and get any sort of rhythm going in the attack, which is usually where Minnesota Aurora gets their strength from. Uh, and that builds energy, and usually that leans them into scoring goals. We just haven't seen that tonight. Stone deflects that out. Another throw coming for Bavarian United. Bavarian under the direction of Mary Whistler, the current Purdue Northwest head coach of the Division II level, former Two-time collegiate All-American is Whistler. That's funny. I have not kept up with Purdue Northwest, but I actually used to coach there myself. I was head coach there a couple years ago, so funny small soccer world. Very small world, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, here's Bavarian cutting back into the middle. Good ball played through to Johnson and just guided out by Kafusi. Another corner upcoming. Marks the second time this year Minnesota has faced a Haley Johnson who plays for a Wisconsin-based team. A Haley Johnson that plays at Milwaukee on the RKC Third Coast roster. This ball coming from the far flag. Looks like Aurora got to it first. Block will pick up the pieces. Ball whipped back in toward poor ball and over everyone's head and out for another goal kick. I think this is the first time we are seeing the three back that Coach Lukic has decided to go with being tested, especially in the outside of the field, which I think is where Bavarian is really starting to expose Minnesota Roar. With three backs, you don't have 
the typical wide players that you're normally used to. You have to ask your midfielders to come back a lot. And that makes it really difficult when you're already on your heels to have players come back and then try to keep any sort of possession turning around and trying to go forward. I think this is the first time we're seeing them actually struggle with it. That ball found Kate Cullison, who is the team's leading scorer with three goals entering this. Minnesota trying to break out now. Ball finds its way across the touchline for another Bavarian throw in. That ball by Mariah Wynn was a pretty good example of how tonight has gone. Typically, Mariah might put her foot on the ball, connect with Maya Hansen. Maya would pop off the back line, connect with the midfielders, and then Minnesota continues to go forward. Instead, Maya Hansen, excuse me, Mariah Wynn just tried to lob that ball forward. It went out of bounds. The team wasn't behind it yet. There wasn't a lot of support around it, and it ended up going out of bounds anyways. So that's the kind of night that I think Minnesota Aurora is having so far. There's his clearance was short and intercepted by Bavarian. Headed out there by Abby Ostrom. Mentioned it earlier, sure, a small sample size for road fixtures, but on average in their two road matches, as this ball whipped back in by Bavarian, Bavarian United out-possessing opponents away from home by an average margin of 35% in their two road matches. You see why a little bit. They are dominating the possession. Yeah, that's a really impressive stat and not something you see that often, especially at this level. Uh, so I think that speaks a lot to the coach's mentality and what she's trying to do with their team, the identity that they're trying to build. As we mentioned, this is their inaugural season, so it's good to see that even though you know they are new, they already have a strategy that's starting to work for them. A whistle and a foul. That will be a free kick coming for Bavarian United. And it is worth mentioning, they do have some infrastructure in place as we take a look at the foul here. And just grabbing a little bit of the shirt up top but this Bavarian team has some infrastructure in place having spent the last three years in the WPSL along with Chicago City actually went 6-1-1 one and one in the Lake Michigan division in their final year last year and that helps having having some infrastructure like that as opposed to some other teams having to start essentially from scratch yeah that's very true this ball hanging in before Harris heads it away. Bavarian in general as a club are one of the oldest clubs, I think, also in the country. So they do have a really solid infrastructure, whether it's in this league and other divisions, things like that. But they are a team and a club with a lot of history. Here's Cat Rap moving forward. Tried to play Adler through and defender cut it out well. Going back to that, though, Bavarian United actually founded in 1929, one of the oldest soccer clubs here in the United States. Good job there by Tiana Harris. Amanda Porba didn't want to come out. She was backing up to her line, which made Tiana have to make a decision there, either clear it out or try to beat her defender. She beat the defender there. A little risky, but good job. Ball carom back to Eli Rapp, just couldn't settle it. And it goes sliding past the near touch line. Maya Hansen, in my opinion, has not seen enough of the ball tonight. 
she is a player that I think Minnesota Aurora typically looks to as the player to hold the ball up, slow it down, connect in the attacking half of the field, and she just hasn't found enough gap for herself to be able to do that tonight. I think that's making it really difficult for Minnesota Aurora to get any sort of attack going. Ball played back to Olsen, the sophomore out of Marquette University. Well, Bavarian will try to build from the back. They've had success doing that early on. A dangerous challenge applied by Stone, and Morgan Stone will go into the book. Our first yellow issued. I think that's a good call by the ref. She came in behind the player, just kind of didn't get enough of the ball. You can see here, she comes in behind, ball kept going, took the player's legs out. So I, I definitely think I would agree with the ref on that call. As we take a look at our rules of the game presented by Larkin Hoffman, you're right, anytime you, you dive in like that from behind, you're going to run the risk of drawing a yellow. I think that even started, though, because Morgan was just a step behind, not reading the play quick enough. Ball deflected out off of Johnson. And Eli Rapp will have the throw. If you're just joining us, it's a bright start for Bavarian on the road. A goal two minutes and change into this contest. Five early shots, three corners. I will say it's a beautiful evening for soccer tonight. The sun, the evening could not be better. Hansen runs past one defender, now wants to cross. That delivery was flat and cleared away. Here's Eli Rapp with it. Madison Tuma able to play it forward. Found her teammate there and Gabby Schwartz. Bavarian just is so comfortable on the ball right now. They're not in any sort of rush. They are going forward to their, their attacking players, dropping the ball back, going all the way back to their back line if needed, and still keeping possession. Shows a lot of comfort that they have in this environment. I'm very impressed with them so far this game. That throw cleared out by Minnesota. Another coming for Bavarian United. Wynn gets the foot in there, able to disrupt that for a moment, and Bavarian turn it over. Cat Rapp fights off the challenge from behind. Ahead to Hansen now. Hansen finds Rapp. Rapp looking for Adler, and Olsen came out, read it well, and that ends the danger for Minnesota. Much better there by Maya Hansen. That is the best she has looked so far this game. Getting up to speed, turning a, on a dime against her defender there, getting a pass to Cat Rap. That's more of along the lines of what we want to see from Minnesota Aurora. Rap just clattered into the defender, and that will draw a whistle. Good run there by Hannah Adler as well. Just a little bit behind there, but a wonderful run trying to get it in the attack. Almost got her foot on it. Bavarian will try to attack from the far side as Krupa will just clear that out. Had multiple teal shirts bearing down on her. Here's Hansen. Vickers pokes it forward and had it taken away.
Give and go to Zukowski. Tried to sidestep Morgan Stone. Just that little foot in there to disrupt it. Aurora back on it. Kafusi heading for the corners. Now Kafusi fighting still. And it's poked out by the center back across the end line. A corner upcoming for Minnesota. Good to see a little bit more of that creative flair, even from the center backs going forward. See her trying to take on one, two players. Maybe a little bit too much there, but good job to get a corner. As mentioned, a sell-out crowd here at TCO Stadium making their presence known. They'll short the corner. Bavarian read that well. Now here's Adler whipping it in. Harris, Rapp, headed away. In, and we are even at one. Minnesota has found the equalizer. I am sure Coach Lukage is so happy with that to have converted on another corner kick. Probably one of their first of the game so far. Maybe a, they've had a few, but, you know, one of their earlier ones. And... Yep, just bouncing around here. Tiana Harris fighting for it. And I think is that, I don't know who that actually ended up going to there. It looked like maybe the foot of Cat Rap. Hansen got a piece of it off the second deflection off the head from Rap. And if it is Cat Rap, that would be her sixth goal of the season. The verdict is in. Cat Rapp with her sixth of the campaign. Six goals and six assists. We talked about Cat Rapp before we went on air, Danny. She has turned in such an impressive performance time and time again this year. Yeah, she really has. She has been a standout player this season. I think she has performed better this season than she even did last season. I think she's come a long way, developed, become a mainstay in this starting 11 for Minnesota Aurora. And a player that I think a lot of people are looking to as a reliable go-getter can we score goals we need somebody to come through here and she's gonna be that Adler was tangled up Aurora will have the throw Rapp will assuredly try to build off of this when she heads back to the beach to Miami for her upcoming season with FIU yeah I mean this is such good training environment for these women Every day they're getting quality training from Coach Lukic. They're getting quality training from their other teammates. And then they're getting good games like this every week, twice a week. It's just, it's a wonderful environment for college players specifically to be in and get ready to go back to their college season. Rapp appeared in 10 matches for the Panthers in 2022. Just two goals scored as we eclipsed a half hour played here at TCO Stadium. An early goal for Bavarian United. And minutes ago, Minnesota found the equalizer. Now, Coach Lukic has made not substitution changes, but she has made tactical changes just in the run of play here. Looks more like Maya Hansen has come out wide right. They slip it to Wickers, whip back in, and headed away. Another corner upcoming for Minnesota, their fourth. And she has moved back to actually more of a four-back, which I think is a really good choice by her. Uh, Bavarian was exposing the outsides just, you know, high on, against Minnesota Aurora. So I think by pulling a fourth back uh, back into that back line is really helpful. It has lent them to being able to have a little bit more of an attack. Adler hangs this one high. Harris heads it wide, and that will be a Chloe Olsen goal kick. Difficult ball there for Harrison to try to get back on on frame there. She's almost at the back half of the 18. She almost needed to bring that down or put it back across the face of the goal because it would have been so hard. You would have had to have so much momentum off that header to score.
Four ball surveying her options going forward. Finds Maddie Ostrom out wide. Ostrom, an onside play up to Hansen. Quickly building here is Minnesota. Hansen tucks it in short side. Minnesota back-to-back -back goals to take the lead. Maya Hansen, Maya Hansen, Maya Hansen. What a wonderful goal there. Wonderful ball across the field. She brought it down, got right at the defender, straight at goal, cut back. See here, wonderful ball by Ostrom there. Maya Hansen, good job to bring it down. Gets straight at goal here. Cuts back. And a wonderful near post finish. Just such a good finish there. I cannot say how difficult this finish is. The goalie is actually wanting to go far post there because it's, it's easier for, at that angle, for Maya Hansen to slice it back post. The choice that she makes to go near post there just is so hard to execute on and really, really difficult for a goalie who's going one direction to try to get back to another. That's seven goals for Maya Hansen. She and Hannah Adler tied for the team lead. Hansen, the all-time leading scorer in franchise history. At the restart, a 2-1 advantage for Minnesota. I am all for changes in, in a lineup, in a formation, but I think Coach Lukic making the adjustments mid-game here to go back to more of a 4-5-1 or a 4-3-3 kind of flow um, has made a huge difference in their ability to keep possession here, even defensively to maintain uh, structure for Minnesota Aurora, and that has lent to two goals right, pretty much right away. So good choices and good coaching by Coach Lukic. What did you say in our broadcast Wednesday? A chess match. Yeah. It's a constant chess match. You have to find a way to press the right buttons. That's exactly right. And I think she has done just that. I will say that also speaks to the the strength that this team has to be able to make those changes on the fly. They clearly are very comfortable with playing in a bunch of different formations. And the fact that Coach Lukic can say, hey, you drop back now and we're going to change this and they just do it is really impressive. Schwartz will throw this one in from the near side. Corner upcoming for Bavarian after Stone heads it out. After falling behind early and Bavarian dominating the early goings, Minnesota a 4-3 advantage in shots on goal, 6-5 in total shots. This is Bavarian's fourth corner of the evening. Looks like it went a little bit of an outswinger, went over the end line as it before coming back into the field there. So out for a goal kick for Minnesota. Ostrom will play one forward, had Adler. That's a good job there by Haley Block. Just to use the body and muscle Adler out of the way. Now that the score is two to one, I think it's going to be a real challenge for Bavarian to try to find another opportunity. Minnesota Aurora is a really, really difficult team to get any goals on. You know, they've only, this is their third goal they've given up this season. To give up two in one match, I think is going to be really a tall order for Bavarian. It's not to say that it can't be done, but now that the score is, has shifted, I think it's going to be even that tighter of a match. Goal kick awarded after Rapp and Johnson really fighting there for that ball.
You're right, though. It, it would take something that has not happened since the league final last year, last season, for Bavarian to at least pull a point. This match is one of the closer match teams, if you will, f against Minnesota Aurora. I would say Bavarian is really giving them a run for their money, probably the best that I've seen this season from any opponent. It's about the team, of course, and how they play together, but if you look on paper at roster construction, they are constructed very similarly. A lot of high-level, mid-major, D1 talent littered throughout both of these rosters. Yeah, both of these coaches know what they're doing. There's no doubt about that. Teams trading possession here. Maybe something for Bavarian. And that was Wickers who poked that away. You mentioned it earlier on. This is the highest pressure we have seen defensively from any opponent as well. Bavarian really high up the field, not letting Minnesota Aurora keep it around the back. Ahead to win. That will be a Bavarian throw. There has been a, a little physicality to this match. We've seen players not afraid to throw the body in and just use that muscle to win balls back. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There has been. Even, I think this is, we haven't seen many yellow cards this season either, and this game has warranted a yellow card. So there is a physicality to it. I think that is also because this is the closest game we've seen so far, and that's going to bring out more of that physical nature, that more competitive nature than what we've seen in typical games so far this season. Aurora as a team had only been shown three yellows all season prior to this. That ball finds Cat Rap. Rap dancing through defenders. Ball played back to Harris and Aurora will try to rebuild this attack from the back. Hansen goes down, a whistle sounds, and Aurora will have a free kick. That's more of the Maya Hansen that we want to see, as we were mentioning earlier, popping off the back line, holding the ball in front of the defenders. Just great show there. Good job, again, to body her, her defender off, keeping the ball. She obviously draws a foul, but that's really good by Maya Hansen. Nowhere to go but back for Morgan Stone. Well, Kafusi ahead to Wickers. This is Ostrom. Tried to play that through the middle, and it's instead into the hands of Chloe Olsen. Looks as though another card coming out, and it will. Ostrom will go into the book. And she has a quick word there with our official. That was Kate Cullison who was impeded. Abby Ostrom was obviously player of the match last game. As we look at our rules of the game presented by Larkin Hoffman. I think a good yellow card there by the ref. I'm going to say she was obviously player of the game last week. She seems to be a, just a step behind this game. I would say she's given a couple balls away unnecessarily. Uh, that was obviously a foul there. Again, unnecessary foul in a dangerous area here. This is Gabby Schwartz who will take this. Angling toward poor ball, and she read that one well, skying for it. Trading possession again. 
And Stone will finally settle on it. Little flick on. This is something that Coach Lukic has talked about throughout the season is taking the bounce out of the ball. That's a really great example of what I, how I think tonight has gone a little bit for Minnesota Aurora, is just bouncing back and forth, difficult to get on the ground, difficult for them to get any possession of it. That's definitely how Aurora typically likes to play is, you know, knock the ball around. It's nice and clean. It's very clinical. Tonight it's been a little bit more in the air, not as connected as we typically like to see them. Schwartz, the giveaway. And Oliviero, no, excuse me, that's Zukowski muscling in, couldn't win it back. Throw quickly taken. Oliviero able to clear the lines. What I will say I really like to see from Minnesota Aurora is that the energy has stayed pretty high late in this half, which is something that we have seen sort of die down from Minnesota Aurora in the last, like, five minutes of each half. They have kept the energy really high. They're still pressing, going, trying to go forward, trying to get at goal. I really like seeing that. Minnesota able to win the free kick. Ball hanging in right toward Olsen, who snatches that down to end any danger. Rap now with it. Rap slicing through. Has Hansen on the overlap. Hansen's cross blocked out. Another corner upcoming for Minnesota. Lovely, lovely footwork there by Cat Rap. Throwing the defender off, giving space for Maya Hansen to continue her run forward and then slipping her in behind. I think Maya could have taken another touch to get to the end line, but really, really good play by both of them there. Two minutes of added time at the end of the half. This one whipped in. Still alive, Harris, and that shot saved. Good save there by Olsen, reading the ball. Tiana Harris had a really good strike on that low, which is really difficult for any keeper to get down to, but really good save by Olsen. Bavarian now struggling to connect passes. Another giveaway. And Stone will recycle that one. Minnesota Aurora has progressively gotten better this half. This is more, I think, along the lines of what they want to see, what they expect from each other, the speed of pit play, the cleanliness, the clinicalness. It's all starting to click here. I think we'll see a much better half for Minnesota Aurora the second half. That was a clever ball from Wynn. Just cleared out, though. Minnesota will have the throw. Wickers, the give and go between her and Rapp. Short clearance for Bavarian. And Ostrom sidesteps one defender. Now space to move. Here's Stone. Win. We'll give it back to Ostrom. Ostrom. Now Hansen heads it in and cleared away. Intercepted by Stone again. Stone. Adler puts it home. Hannah Adler's eighth of the year in stoppage time. This probably was 20, 25 connected passes that led to this goal went from the back line 
from Abby Ostrom to the left side of the field. Morgan Stone obviously ending at the end here, stepping up, getting to the end line. Header across by Mariah Wynn. Hannah Adler charting her eighth goal from the season. Really impressive season from her so far. But this, to me, was the best goal, and I would say some of the best play we've seen from Minnesota Aurora this season. Wonderful, wonderful goal from them. Built up from the back, from one side to the other, ended in a goal. Wonderful way to finish the half. There's the whistle. We have reached halftime at TCO Stadium. Minnesota fought off an early 1-0 deficit. Three straight goals for Aurora. They will head into the break with the advantage on the scoreboard and the shots and the corners. 3-1. We'll head to break on Fox 9 Plus. The halftime report coming up on the other side. Aurora fans. You're watching the Fox 9 Plus Halftime Report. Welcome into the Aurora Halftime Show, everybody. I'm Pierre Nujum. Fresh off a 2022 season where she was the second leading scorer on the Aurora, Morgan Stone is spending her summers here in Minnesota while playing college soccer at Boise State. Fox 9's Ahmad Hicks caught up with Stone to see what it's like playing for two different teams in two different states. Here's Stone all alone. Stone sends the shot forward. Are you serious? They say when things are good. I just absolutely fell in love with the atmosphere here. You usually can't get enough. The fans, the community, everything was so fun um, to be a part of. Which is exactly why holding midfielder Morgan Stone is back for seconds. Also, it was just so competitive. So we get better through the summer. A full-time student athlete at Boise State and a summer soccer player with Minnesota Aurora FC. Stone says the extra summer grind is all part of her plan. My parents have some papers from when I was in like third grade of like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it was always pro soccer. And last summer was her glimpse of what that life may soon be like. All right, USLW <laughs> League in the 60th minute, Morgan Stone, powerful strike from deep. My <laughs> phone was blowing up. I've never been so popular. I was like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. But it was all very rewarding. With the support from friends and family back home. Oh, to the Mall of America here in Minnesota, Stone has been able to see the impact soccer players like her are having on the next generation of stars. I think it makes it all worth it for me um, because I can see the light in their eyes when they look at me and when they talk to me that I saw when I was growing up. And I just want them to know that it is possible. And her advice to the next wave of stars is to dream big and have fun because look where it's gotten her thus far. Anything is possible at that age. You can do anything you want. And it's a lot harder to say it than to do it. But if you put your mind to it, you really can do it. And I didn't, I don't know if I fully believed I could do it, but here I am in this amazing place. And Egan, I'm Ahmad Hicks, Fox 9 Sports. Well, when you look at this Minnesota Aurora roster, you see names and faces from all sorts of backgrounds. But one player in particular credits her family and country for giving her the proper motivation on the field. Back to Ahmad Hicks with more. For some people, soccer is just a game, but in Paola Ten's case, it's a family thing. Because of my brother, like he started playing and my sister as well, so I like kind of had like an attraction to that. She credits her brother for building up her strength. I basically started playing with boys, so it made me a little bit tougher. In need of a bigger challenge, one day Tin decided it was time to play American soccer. I know it would be like a lot more demanding, like fast-paced soccer. She packed her bags and headed to play at Iowa Lakes Community College, admitting she kind of underestimated the weather. How many winter coats did you bring with you when you came? Zero. My <laughs> mom gave me one, but it was, it was definitely not enough. <laughs> but she had more than enough talent, earning first team all region. That play also led to another invite to play for her national team. When you were nine years old, did you ever envision yourself playing for the national team? Never. <laughs> <laughs> this summer, 10 will compete for the Dominican Republic under 20 team with some of the world's best. It always pushes me to be the best version of myself. 
and also I can contribute to my nation and I cannot be more proud of that. And when she's done there, she's excited to see what the Aurora is all about. I heard like they got to the finals, like all the audience, all the like community group that is like everyone in Minnesota is helping and supporting the group. So I was like really impressed by that. Even more impressive, the star studded roster, which will help bring Tin's dreams of going pro much closer to being a reality. Well, it has like a lot of professional players that have played like in the past. So I think like getting like surrounded by them, like it makes me feel like, like it's pushing myself to the best. And Egan, I'm Ahmad Hicks, Fox 9 Sports. And that's great stuff from Ahmad Hicks there. Stick around everybody. We'll be right back with more on the other side of the break. Aurora fans, you're watching the Fox 9 Plus Halftime Report. Welcome back into the Aurora Halftime Show, everybody. Midfielder Sophie French is a key cog in the Aurora machine, and as she tells our own Don Mitchell, it took some time adjusting to Minnesota, but now that she's here, she's all in. Oh my goodness, I've heard humidity is intense here. In Oregon, it's very crisp, like clean, clear. And here it's really humid. And then I've also heard horror stories about the mosquitoes that are like that big. Sophie French is ready for anything a Minnesota summer has to offer. I've got my bug spray. That was part of my little care package my um, twin sister gave me before I left. She was like, here's some bug spray. Take that with you. And nothing, not even mosquitoes, will keep Sophie from diving full force into the Minnesota Aurora community. And the thing that really stuck out to me about Minnesota was just the community-oriented build the community oriented team coaches facility everything so I think that 
sense of community was super important to me, but then I also really, really liked the empowering women, the um, involving pieces in the community to empower women into different roles in different spots. Um, that really stuck out to me and I really, that really like just clicked with me. And I also just liked that Minnesota was creating a space for women's soccer players to grow and for the women's game to grow as well. Sophie's twin sister Lily has great advice for bug spray, but also soccer. Family plays a huge role in who Sophie is today. I have an older brother, two years older, and so obviously whatever he did, I wanted to do, but I also had a twin sister, and so it was me and her always like trying to compete with each other and at first we were super nervous to like go out for the soccer team but then once I saw her doing it I was like oh, I got to do that too so it's always been me and her like trying to one-up each other being competitive but no she's the best she's like been my lifelong training partner um always competitive but always fun and same positions different positions different positions okay. okay different positions so we would play on the opposite sides when we were on the same team and then we'd like run up cross it she would score or the other way around or when we played each other, we would be on the same side. Like she'd be a forward and I'd be a defender and we'd go head to head, which was always like really fun because I love to like be scrappy and kind of tug at her and you know, get on her nerves. But then I'm also like, if she wins the ball, I was like, go Lily, go. You know, I was like, oh wait, not my team. Like don't cheer for her. While her siblings helped sharpen her competitive juices at an early age, Sophie had the hunger for soccer on her own since she was 10 years old. And you can thank David Beckham for that. You know that movie, Bend It Like Beckham? Yeah. That might have been the little, the little inspo, the little click where I was like, this is a goal that is attainable. And this is something I can, even from a young age, even it's something I can do, something I would like to do. I want to be like that. I want to go play college sports. I want to dedicate my day to recovery, nutrition, being ready in everything I do to prepare for that practice the next day. And that she did. Starting at the University of Idaho, she transferred to Cal State Fullerton and then again to the University of Portland. After college, Sophie played for the Portland Thorns FC of the NWSL. Now she's here in Minnesota and happy to tell young players to always keep chasing their dreams no matter where they take you. Just because college soccer is over it doesn't mean and you know maybe I didn't have looks right away it doesn't mean my journey's over everyone's journey is different and that's kind of what I've been learning from meeting all the new girls here is that everyone's journey is different everyone has their own path and as long as you're doing what you love like why would you stop as you can imagine there's no stopping Sophie next up aiming to win a championship with Minnesota Aurora and reward those amazing fans in the process you can't find that anywhere else, like especially with this level of soccer, competitive, it's fun, and we have a great following. I don't know, to me that's like, you're checking all the boxes, right? You, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's amazing what they've done here and created. Very well said from Sophie there, no doubt about it. Thanks for staying with us here on the Aurora Halftime Show, everybody. Coming up next, second half action as Minnesota looks to remain undefeated. You don't want to miss that on the other side of the break.
The Ravon Delay, Aurora's supporter section, helping keep the crowd energized at halftime here on Pride Night at TCO Stadium. The first half, more than enough to keep them energized for 45 minutes because of so much action. Although they were on their edge of their seat, you should say, uh, early on. Minnesota falling down a goal for the first time this year after this early strike from Haley Johnson, two and a half minutes in. Minnesota, though, Danny, did a good job of switching things up mid-game. Yeah, this is the best that I think an opponent has come out against Minnesota Aurora, put them on their heels. It was really difficult for Aurora to try to find any sort of rhythm. Bavarian did a really great job of keeping the ball, going forward, disrupting what Minnesota Aurora was doing. They were really successful in the beginning of the first half. The second part of the first half was a totally different story. I think Minnesota Aurora started to find their stride a little bit more. Obviously, scoring three goals is helpful. In saying that, I would like to see Minnesota Aurora continue that rhythm of play this second half. I think Bavarian is going to try to continue to make it challenging for Minnesota Aurora. Aurora just needs to keep doing what they were doing at the end of the first half. We talked about it in our broadcast open. Scoring balance for Minnesota. Three goals in the first half from three different players. Yeah, that first half almost didn't feel like a 3-1 half because it was so back and forth. And I think Bavarian did have a lot of success in that first half. Having said that, Minnesota Aurora is so dangerous. They are so good at finding goals against the run of play. And goals, at the end of the day, make all of the difference in the world. A 3-1 to one game feels a little bit more out of reach for Bavarian than, say, a 1-1 or 2-1 game, obviously. So, you know, Minnesota Aurora has what they need. If nothing else happens this half, they have what they came here for today, which is three points. It's just going to be a matter of closing this game out. Aurora currently five points clear of Chicago City SC in the Heartland Division table. As we inch closer to the postseason picture, that becomes very crucial. Sophie French will check in for the second half for Minnesota. Otherwise, no changes elsewhere for Aurora somewhat uncharacteristic we we have seen them at times make a number of changes coming into the second half yeah it's an interesting sub sophie french actually came on for morgan stone here which i think is probably lending to the fact that's a forward for a midfield for everybody watching uh, a midfielder coming in which i think is changing the fact that coach lukic is probably making some adjustments to the formation wants to see a little bit more structure defensively um does look like they have a four back again so i think they are going into more of that four three three or four five one kind of depending on how that shakes out aurora trying to start the second half on the front foot win with it tries to play french through and a little miscommunication aurora will have the throw Eight total shots for Minnesota to just five for Bavarian after 45 minutes. Kafusi trying to play that through the middle. It's turned over. Bavarian United made no changes at the half. Same 11 on the pitch. Collison, a little too much behind that, wanted to cross it in, and it's out for a Minnesota goal kick. The other changes Coach Lukic is sticking with in this half, Maya Hansen is out to the right, Sophie French is the high forward, um, it looks like Mariah Wynn is still out to the left, Cat Rapp and Hannah Adler in the midfield there. So sticking with a lot of the same players, but moving Maya Hansen out to the right, which is how she ended that first half. And I do think she created a ton of opportunities for herself out right there. I think it's gonna be a matter of Sophie French doing what we like to see from Maya Hansen, which is typically 
popping out from the defenders, keeping that ball in front of the defenders, connecting with the midfielders. Um, and that's what we're going to want to see from Sophie French this half. Resniak, the Indiana Hoosier, will toss it in. Head collision there. You never want to see that as immediately the official motions the training staff onto the pitch. Trainers will take a look at the two players in the interim as we mentioned it at the start of the second half, the playoff, the postseason picture. Looking at the Central Conference specifically, Minnesota still in the driver's seat in the Heartland. Great Lakes, Flint City, AFC leading that division. Right now, Indy 11 and Racing Louisville, a toss-up there in the Valley. That's a product of Indy 11 losing earlier this week a stunner 2-0 to St. Charles FC at home, no less. Right now, Indy 11 holds the head-to-head -head tiebreaker, even though they're tied in points. That would leave Racing Louisville as the wild card for the Central. Yeah, this is where the back half of the season always turns into something different. You never know, as we've said, what team you're going to get um, because at the back half, we have a lot of players who have to go back to college. They have to go back to other things that they have going on. They just don't have the same roster that they, they did at the beginning of the season. And and that is something that in the back half of the season, it really starts to play an effect in who gets through into that playoff spot. That was Madison Tuma who was able to walk off the pitch under her own power after that collision with Addie Wickers. Injuries such as that could be a big factor in the second half because because Bavarian United traveled only 13 players. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. 13 players is a pretty shallow shallow bench that only leaves two players that you can make substitutions with so you're expecting a lot out of your 11 players that are on the field not only are they all going to have to play many many minutes but should an injury happen like this there's not a ton that you can do there's not a lot that you can go to your bench for and say we can make this sub we can move around like this you you really are only stuck with you know, two players that you can do that with. So that definitely will play an effect. Um, obviously, you want to see the player healthy here, but it definitely could make an effect in how this game turns out for Bavarian. I want to give a shout out to Twin Cities Orthopedics, the official sponsor of Minnesota Aurora, the trainers lending a hand. Right now, in addition to the health of Madison Tuma, one of the most pressing issues is the little bit of blood on the pitch that they are looking to get cleaned up. That is what is causing this delay. Yeah, the health and safety of all these players is the most important, so they are going to take their time, get this sorted out, make sure that everybody's good to go before the game resumes here. Addie Wickers right now on the near touch line with her head coach, Nicole Lukic, giving the signal saying, hey, I'm good, everybody. It does look like they keep motioning to Wickers' headband, and it looks like there may be a little blood on that, which is why she was sent off the pitch just minutes ago. does make it harder for these kind of blood situations when it is on turf, so more due diligence needs to go into it, which they are doing. They're taking the right steps here. We'll take a look at the Heartland division table. Touched on it a minute ago. Right now, Aurora atop the table 
an unblemished 7-0-0 record for 21 points. Chicago City doing a good job of staying within striking distance. They will have another matchup with Minnesota at the end of the season here at TCO Stadium. And then you have Bavarian United at third. Green Bay, who we just saw on Wednesday, knotted up with Chicago Dutch Lions. Rochester FC, it's been a, a tough go of it in their inaugural campaign, still seeking their first win. Yeah, it, the inaugural season for any club is always a challenge. You see that at every level. It's hard for them to adjust to what does the speed of play look like? What does it mean for us to be traveling? You know, how do we travel? How do we bring all of these players? Um, what is the identity of our team? Just a lot of questions happening across the identity of any team. Um, but I think Rochester will get there as this league continues to grow and become more sophisticated and more comfortable. These teams will start to figure out who they are and how to how to be more successful at this level. Bavarian will make one change and they will bring in. Zoe, they will bring in Zoe. Zoe Heavy, one of their reserve players who will make her first appearance of the season. Madison Tuma has officially left the bench area, and we resume this contest with a drop ball. And Aurora, good showmanship there, playing the ball back to back to Bavarian to get the game going again. Bavarian now moving through the midfield, trying to build something here. Foot race. It's Cullison. Cut out there by Harris. Just wonderful defending by Tiana Harris there. No foul, just pulls the ball back underneath her, loses her defender. Easy pass from there. Obviously, the health and safety of the injured player is the most important thing, but when you have an extended stoppage like that, as a player, Danny, how hard is it to get back into the game after what felt like about 10 minutes? You know, a stoppage like that can actually go one of two ways. In a lot of moments, <laughs> you actually need that little break. You need a rest. I would say that's pretty early on for them to need a rest just right out after halftime. But sometimes, you know, that actually can be really needed and, and work well for a team. I think both of these teams probably are, you know, they're still a, just a few minutes after half, so I don't think that played too much into it. Um, they're still trying to find their footing and what this second half is going to look like, so I don't think it'll impact too much, but we'll see. Ball went out off of Gresniak. Aurora will have to throw. Finds its way to French. French had a goal in Aurora's win on Wednesday over Green Bay, converted Minnesota's third penalty of the season. And that penalty was with authority. She really hit it well, almost impossible save for the goalie unless the goalie really guessed right. So great strike by her. Adler, a flick on and just misplaced that one. Had wind running down the near side and Olsen again. Teams trading headers. Now Rapp will settle underneath it. Intercepted by Gresniak. Addie Wickers has been really good this evening. I think she's been a little bit of a quiet hero, if you will. She has been the connector in both formations. Uh, the 3 6 1 before Aurora made the change. Good build up for Minnesota. Adler crosses that in and too much behind it finds its way out for an Olsen goal kick.
Wynn will toss it into Ostrom. Some space now for Ostrom. Gresniak hounded by French and Wynn. That forces Olsen's hand. Just clears it out of play to take the pressure off. In this half, Aurora has definitely had more of the possession. It has been harder for Bavarian to find any sort of rhythm. They have been the ones leaning more towards the long ball, let's play out, let's take some of the pressure off, whereas Minnesota Aurora was a little bit more like that in the, the beginning of the first half. So starting to see Aurora get back into the swing of their typical rhythm, ball on the ground, connecting passes, high and tight pressure defensively. Intercepted by French. Plays Wickers through. This could be something. And a good recovery by the back line there of Bavarian. It's cleared out for a Minnesota throw. Yeah, Eddie Wickers just turning back there rather than facing goal and trying to get a cross off or even a shot in that moment. The cross comes in. Wynn heads it wide. Good ball here by Maya Hansen, finding win on the backside. If she just nods that down back to the far post there, I think that's a goal every time. Hard to do, really good run by her. She was in a great position, just not executing at the very end there, but good buildup. Win gets tangled up in the aerial duel. That actually goes again against Mariah Wynn there, I think she was trying to come out, kind of went cleats up a little bit, um, a little out of control in that. Yep, just trying to get behind it. Bavarian looking for a response after conceding three consecutive goals. Oh, ball carries back to poor ball. Dangerous decision with it, and this throw will be in a very good spot for Bavarian United. We have talked about it a lot this year about how comfortable Minnesota Aurora is playing the ball around the back, getting Amanda Poorball involved when needed. But that invites pressure. It invites the pressure of Bavarian to step up, to win the ball high up the field which is a tactic that Minnesota Aurora tries to employ on the other side, trying to win the ball high up the field there, but this is where it kind of turns out can be dangerous. That ball whipped in there by Johnson, but over the bar and out for a Minnesota goal kick. That first half felt like a lot of swinging momentum back and forth. First, it was Bavarian, then Minnesota settled in. At least initially to start this second half, it does feel a little more evenly matched. Each team has a salvo and a response. I would agree with that. I think Minnesota Aurora has a little bit more of the edge in terms of cleanliness this half. I don't think they had that last half, but this half they, sh they certainly have improved upon that. I think they're starting to mesh a little bit better, and I think Bavarian's struggling a little bit to try to find any rhythm within themselves, but that certainly doesn't mean that they can be dangerous just in, in wreaking havoc and disrupting, and that's certainly working. Bavarian still looking for their first official shot of the second half. Minnesota with 10 in the match. Adler. Great ball through to win. Win gets tripped up at the last moment. Looked like she caught her own feet there, and that was enough room for Olsen to just dive on it. Great save by Olsen. Good decision to come off the line there. Mariah Wynn was trying to look for her sort of quintessential goal that she scored a few weeks ago. Just a wonderful ball by Hannah Adler. Vision was just wonderful there. Looking up, seeing Mariah win. Mariah wanted to take one more touch there past the goalie. Just wasn't quick enough to get there. But a really, really good buildup. And I can't say enough about the vision there by Hannah Adler to even start that play. Win will play French through. French here providing the whip. Aurora will have the throw on that replay we just showed the unsung hero there 
Gresniak as well did just enough to get win to get tangled up in her own feet. That'll be a goal kick up coming for Chloe Olsen. Despite the three goals conceded, Olsen has played well in net for Bavaria. Yeah, I was watching her in warm-ups today and was really impressed with the saves that she was making. So far in her in the game, she has also made really, really good decisions about when to come off the line. She's had pretty good distribution, so I've definitely been impressed with her play tonight. Gresniak quickly tosses it in. Oliviero will steer it back to Olsen. Defensively, Minnesota Aurora has been way more solid this half as well, just in terms of stepping up, winning the ball in front of their front line. Good delivery by Rapp. Win! Mariah Wynn strikes once more. And just as I was saying that, this started with a good win by Kelsey Kafusi on the back line, getting the ball forward to Addie Wickers. Addie playing it forward. A good ball across the, the top of the box to Mariah Wynn. Wonderful touch to bring it down. Great touch there. And then just a wonderful finish. Her fifth of the season, four consecutive goals for Minnesota since trailing 1-0. The former Summit League Newcomer of the Year for St. Thomas, helping extend the Minnesota advantage. Now 38 goals scored on the season at the moment. Minnesota, the highest scoring team in the league. Pat Rapp able to win it back for Minnesota. He's looking for win there, and just too much behind it from Tiana Harris. Resniak's pass intercepted. Minnesota back on it, then gave it away. Minnesota Aurora is just so good at scoring goals. And we have talked about this from the beginning of the season. Coach Lukic has said, I'm comfortable with my team giving up goals as long as we're attacking minded because we can score more goals than anybody else. And that has proven to be a really, really successful tactic for this team. They have been very successful at it. And I mean, I mean, it, it works for them. But you can also see that the, girl, the women love playing in it. It's a lot of fun for them. Schwartz whips that in, and it's punched away by poor ball. Now Gresniak invited to shoot, and that goes sailing high. That's probably the best attacking effort we've seen from Bavarian in the second half. Yeah, I would agree with that. They haven't had a ton to build off of yet. Amanda Porma made a good decision there just to punch the ball out. Um, I don't think much would have come come from that regardless, but Bavarian has had a harder time this half trying to connect in the attacking half of their field. Bavarian now throwing numbers forward, trying to win this ball back. That goes over the top, and no one will get to it. Bavarian United set to make a change at the next opportunity. Meanwhile, here's Minnesota. They give it away and a short clearance from Bavarian.
Ostrom steps in front. Now left off for Wynn. Wynn and Gresniak really going at that. She finds Rapp. There's Wynn with it again. Cross was blocked. Corner coming for Minnesota. What a difference a couple goals make. This game feels completely different from the first 30 minutes of this game. Now, Minnesota are very much in charge, comfortable with the ball, getting at the, de the defense, at the end line. Six corners tonight for Minnesota, who leads the Heartland in total corners. Ostrom whips that in. Inches high great strike by her I was not sure at first if she was going to try to cross it there or go for goal she definitely was going for goal there and she she had a pretty good eye on on the goal line there Kate Cullison will come off in favor of Taylor Renzel the freshman out of Kentucky Renzel the native of New Berlin Wisconsin but at 15 appearances Last year for the Wildcats. Adler with it. Now Kafusi. Aurora will change the angle of the attack. Here's Ostrom near side. One thing about Bavarian, they're not afraid to step up, get up in your face, and force situations like what we just saw, in essence, a turnover for Minnesota. Yeah, they have not backed down with their high press mentality. Four balls clearance intercepted. Quickly an opportunity for Bavarian. And that shot saved by Amanda Poorball. A really great step there by Zoe Havy on on Bavarian, just getting at goal. She almost took that on herself. She covered like 30 yards in one or two touches. Really, really great step by her. Ball finds win, and defender goes down. Rap on the overlap. Falls through to French. Adler saved by Olsen. And it looks like it'll be a foul rather than a goal kick there. Man, what an opportunity for Minnesota Aurora on a couple different occasions there. Sophie French taking just one too many touches. I think if she can get that strike off. Great job by Mariah Wynn and Cat Rapp to get at the goal there. Sophie French just getting the ball stuck up under her foot on accident. It looked like she wanted to strike the ball there, but just couldn't get it off. And then Hannah Adler coming in at the end. Unfortunate that that didn't go in. Rap tried to get fancy and back heel it. Instead, back heels it out. It will be a Bavarian throw. First, though, Minnesota will make a trio of changes. Rami Rap. Olsen and Zbilic will all three come in. Hansen, Ostrom, and Catrap will all three leave. Olsen made her, in her debut last game, first couple of minutes stepped in and had a goal to herself so we'd love to see that again from her this evening looking for block over the top on that long ball Olsen flubs the clearance and Harris is there to pick up the pieces right it back to Amanda poor ball she tries to jump start the rush with that clearance. French will play win into space. Win 
the service and not placed where she was looking to and takes a hop into the gloves there of Olsen. Yeah, Mariah Wynn breaking out of her usual tendency to get to the end line, trying to get an earlier cross off there. I just don't think there was enough players crashing the box uh, for her to do that. Not a bad idea. Because of the high press from Bavarian, one thing we've seen Amanda Porball have to use more is those long clearances to try to generate something on the other end for Minnesota. I don't just think it's generating something. I think it's also like releasing the pressure because Bavarian is playing so high. There is a time and a place to keep possession along the back line to slow the tempo down. We saw it against Green Bay last on Wednesday. They were very comfortable in letting them do that. Today's game is not that kind of a game. It hasn't gone that well for Minnesota Aurora. So I think it's more just releasing the pressure than anything else. Adler goes down. And meanwhile, behind the play, Sikowski had also went down for Bavarian. The official not giving a foul on either. And 70 plus minutes in, that, that seems like sound officiating. I would say so. I mean, I think at this point he has made appropriate calls when needed. I don't think either of those moments required a foul per se. It was kind of like let him play. You know, it has been a very clean game, albeit physical, but a pretty clean game overall. Kafusi read that one well and heads it away. Now Olsen, hounded by Gresniak, caroms to the feet of Renzel. Olsen able to step in front and cut that opportunity out. A goal kick coming for Minnesota. With her goal earlier tonight, Hannah Adler not only tallies her eighth, but now moves into a tie for sixth in the league as that golden boot chase starts to come to a head toward the end of the season a little flick on there block i believe it also puts her in a tie for most goals in a single season from any player on minnesota aurora ties her with morgan turner from last season so if hannah adler can notch another one this season she will be on top of that scoring sheet We've said it a lot this year. Everyone on the individual goal-scoring leaderboard looking up at Bailey DeSmit. Margaret Tate for Eagle FC just behind in second with 10 goals, as is Carissa Beckman from Tampa United. Long, long deflection there going out for a corner kick. I think she was trying just to step in and even knock it out for a throw and it ended up going out for a corner minnesota's got to be pretty happy with that one that will be minnesota's seventh corner of the match aurora not only leads the heartland in corners third most in the league in total good service here and it's tiana harris her fourth that was such a beautiful ball by Addie Wickers. You could not ask for a better ball. It was over the top of the goalie, just landed literally almost on the back post, a perfect position for Tiana Harris just to have to get anything on it. But she, a wonderful header by her. That's how many goals by Tiana Harris now as the center back? Just absurd. Wonderful header. Great ball by Addie Wickers. And I know Coach Lukic has to be so happy about that. We have talked about that throughout the season. She wants them to be really solid, both attacking and defensively on set pieces. Tiana Harris has been standout all season in these exact moments, both defensively and in the attack. She has scored and scored and scored again as a center back. Just she's a she's a unicorn player. It is showing right now. Another change made by Minnesota as Adler will leave. Deanna Benke will come on.
A 5-1 lead for Minnesota. Five unanswered goals for Aurora. After going down 1-0. As Harris will volley that one away. Coach Lukic has talked about it throughout the season, about how everybody is going to give Aurora their best game because Aurora sits atop the league. They've been known in this league to score a lot of goals. So everybody's going to try to bring out their best game. I think Bavarian did just that tonight. I would guess that Coach Lukic has got to be actually pretty pleased that they were given a solid challenge, and they had to respond. They had to come back from behind. It's something we haven't seen yet this season for Minnesota to have to do, and they responded really well to it. It took them a while. They had to figure it out. They had to shake some things off, but they figured it out, and here they are back in their rhythm. When we caught up with her earlier this week, I thought she had a really insightful quote. And it's not necessarily about facing adversity on the pitch, but she said, as a team, we're adaptable. And to get to where we need to go and want to go, we have to be adaptable. And I think they've shown that adaptability tonight. Absolutely. Not only did they change formations in the flow of the game, they had to respond to adversity. They had to respond to adversity even on Wednesday. But they did that. They came back. They showed they could still win doesn't matter what the challenges are they're still going to keep going forward they're going to keep scoring goals they have just been a really really impressive team hard to shake i will say that this is the seventh match this season with three or more goals minnesota looking for more and that will go across the end line last year minnesota all season eight matches with three or more goals 12 matches with at least two so they are coming extremely close to matching if not exceeding that as a keeper change will be made close to the 80th minute poor ball out olivia groutman in the current saint thomas tommy French and Minnesota looking for more, and French sends that over the bar. Tough, tough angle. She put herself in there. Good first touch. She almost took it a little bit too long. If that would have been even a little bit more direct or straight, I think she would have had a little bit of a better angle there, but she did a really, really great job to get around it and get a good shot off. Another corner here for Minnesota, the eighth of the match. They've already scored off one set piece tonight. Wickers with the delivery. French with the header, and it just goes inches past that far post. You saw the frustration immediately threw her hands down. Couldn't believe it. Good header, another good ball by Addie Wickers here. I think Bavarian had it covered. They had a player on the post there, but a really good header. Uh, at least putting some pressure on them. Aurora wanting more, sending bodies forward. Six thousand four hundred and twenty-three. A sellout here for these die-hard Minnesota supporters. That's out for a Bavarian throw. They had to wait a couple extra days. Initially, it looked as though Wednesday was either going to be or as close as possible to a sellout. The situation was what it was. They responded in kind today. 
Yeah, unfortunate for both teams, Green Bay and Aurora on Wednesday. I know everybody wanted to play in front of this crowd. The crowd was excited. Everybody was really happy to be having a, a sellout game again. But as you said, it was what it was. And, you know, the safety and health of the players comes first. So I think it was a good decision to play inside. And now I know everybody's even more excited to be back out here in this atmosphere again. Here's Olsen with it as Harris will backtrack now. Aurora just trying to get out of their own end. It will be a Minnesota throw as Olsen will take it. I'm curious your thoughts on this. Obviously, Minnesota, a very talented team looking to go to 8-0-0. When playoff time rolls around, however, and Nicole Lukic has talked about this, wanting to be challenged during the regular season, to be ready for the playoffs. This is undoubtedly the most challenged Minnesota has been in a match this year. What do you think it says about the long-term future for Minnesota that they were challenged this heavily, responded, and then some? Yeah, I think you're undoubtedly right. This is the most challenging opponent that we've seen so far this is the most i think that we've seen minnesota on their heels obviously this is the first time we've seen them having to climb from a deficit that ball whipped in and won't find the head of a bavarian player having said that i do think it's a really important moment for coach lukic and the team to learn from to see how different players respond to have to make adjustments on the fly as we've talked about making that formation adjustment and they responded really really well to that trying to go one on one there that was Hannah Krupa and that ball will fly past the end line it was last touched by a Minnesota player so corner kick coming up all that to say, I think Coach Lukic has to be really, really happy with how her team did respond. Scoring five goals is obviously a great, a great place to be. So, There's Schwartz led the NCAA in assists two years ago. That header. And the follow-up shot goes significantly wide. Goal kick upcoming. The other thing I will say about that as well is that Coach Lukic has talked a lot about how, you know, if they can't find that kind of challenge in game situations, they're going to try to create that kind of an opportunity in training every single day. And clearly that training mentality has paid off for them. She made those changes when they were under pressure, and they almost did it seamlessly, like they have done it time and time again they've they know exactly what to expect they knew how to do it they knew how to execute it so i think for me she's got to be really happy to say like yeah we were prepared for that and we did it you know without even having to think about it remy rap will go down and our third yellow of the evening is shown this time to bavarian united Just a really firm tackle there. Oh, a double tackle. I think that's where it came from, actually. The first firm tackle and the second one just kind of catching Remy Rapp there on her foot. Now our rules of the game presented by Larkin Hoffman. That foul against Oliviero. Kafusi angling that one, and it goes toward goal. I believe that was Sophie French who caught that with the head. It does win the corner. I actually think that was off of off of Bavarian. I don't know. Sophie went up for the, the challenge there. I'm not sure if it if she actually was able to get on the end of it, but a good challenge. Let's see here. A good ball by Kafusi. Yep. Just off the head of the Bavarian, but a good challenge there by Sophie French. It was Haley Block, the former Ohio Valley freshman of the year at SEMO. Now here's Olsen. Went for goal and a little high on it. 
Olsen also going for that same strike that Ostrom had just previously. Really good strike there, just a little bit high and wide. After tonight's match, Minnesota will open up a three-match road stand, their longest stretch away from TCO all season. RKC, Third Coast, Bavarian United, and Green Bay before returning home to take on Chicago City. As French gets tangled up with Krupa, who went for the challenge. Those two still going at it. And finally cleared out for Minnesota's 10th corner of the match. Sophie French, just such a workhorse there, taking on three different almost tackles, um, trying to keep the ball in the attacking half there. Ended up obviously winning a corner, so really great work by her. Good. You can see her battling, getting up, trying again. Wickers delivers. Met first by an Aurora player. That looked like it was Eli Rapp. And instead, it was Olsen who saved it. Banky was looking for the foul, and we see a little bit more of that physicality we've seen tonight on display. Really great job by, by her to track back there just defensively. She almost ran, I think, 30, 40 yards to track the ball down there, slow it down. So really great job by her. As mentioned, Minnesota will hit the road next match against RKC Third Coast, who are coming off. Their second win of the season. Uh, we have a whistle and a foul. A 3-2 win away over Rochester on Wednesday night. They've come a long way, RKC has, since we saw them a few weeks ago, losing 10-0 in this building to Minnesota. They do have a minus 26 goal differential, which stands as the sixth worst in the league. Yeah, whenever you have a couple games that you notch 10 goals against you, you're, I mean, that's, that's a really, really difficult goal differential to, to come back from, even if not all of their games have fallen that way. I think next season we'll, we'll see a little bit more from RKC than we did this season, having said that it was their first season. So, you know, have to give them a little bit of grace there. Zukowski gave it up, now looking for it again as it takes a hop off the foot of Johnson. That will force Olivia Groutman's hand, or foot, so to speak. Good job there by Kafusi. It actually came off her foot there and was headed out for a corner. She told um, she told her, her keeper to come off the line there, use her feet, kept it in bounds, did a great job. Seven minutes of extra time at the or excuse me added time i should say at the end of this that obviously due to the extended injury delay we saw and now another whistle as a bavarian player is down that is taylor renzel maybe a cramp or something here hard to tell it, it is late in the game it's warm out here these women have worked very hard for 90 minutes so just maybe taking a minute here. Training staff will come out to check on the injured player. Looks to be just a little knock. Again, I want to shout out Twin Cities Orthopedics, the official sponsor of Minnesota Aurora. And we said it earlier, but this is where it becomes really difficult for Bavarian. They've only traveled one other player, or two other players, but one one is down because of the injury previously. So they don't have a ton to fall back on in these moments. And now playing actually a man down right now. And because of the no re-injury rule in the USLW, they did make one change earlier in this half. That player being Kate Cullison cannot come back in. For Bavarian United, 
They will stay on the road, a trip southward from here as French in an offside position to the Windy City, Chicago City SC coming up for Bavarian. We showed you the table earlier. City holding very strong. Alone in second place, 16 points. Suffered their first loss of the year to Minnesota a couple matches ago. Still in line for a wild card bid to the playoffs. Of course, coming down to the end of the year, things like points per match could come into a factor, certain tie break scenarios. Goal differential, points per match, head-to-head, -head, those are all going to be things that get considered at different points. Spielich played that to the foot of Rami Rapp, and it takes a carom into the hands of Olsen. But you're right, all of those things could come into play at the end of the season, especially when you look at, and we talked about that battle in the Valley. There are others right now, San Francisco, or excuse me, Cal Storm and Oakland Soul, tied in points in the NorCal table, they split the season series head-to-head. -head. So that is going to get a little interesting coming to the final weekend of the season. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult. This is where we've talked about it before, but every single game, every single point matters. Even things that come down to like a tie for just a single point game can become crucial in the difference making in the late half of this of this season for all teams, especially when you're in you're in a situation like that or you're in a situation where it's like maybe a um, looks like it's going to be a, a foul here by Sophie French. That's always going to go in the the ref has a particular inclination for protecting the goalie always so that's definitely a, a good call by him there against Sophie just the seventh foul Minnesota has been whistled for this evening Aurora will have the throw on this near side going back to Bavarian and Chicago they have played once already this year a thrilling 2-2 draw Kate, uh, excuse me, Haley Block and Brooke Parnello, who we did not see tonight, surprisingly. Both scored for Bavarian in that draw as an Aurora player goes down. That's Fina Banky. Foul whistled for on Alex Campana. Over to Olsen, off the free kick. Seven minutes of added time here really can start to feel long on these heavy, tired legs when you've already put in 90 minutes of work prior to the game. Bavarian, especially because they don't have that much relief, they've not been able to make that many subs, so a lot of these women are playing on really tired legs right now and that's lending to I would say the uptick in fouls just over the last couple of minutes here as well Olsen comes out of a tangle with possession now Banky sidesteps Banky with space still with it and a shot saved by a diving Chloe Olsen a great individual effort from Vienna Banky. Yeah, I don't mind that by Vienna Banky. She did have a player out wide here that she could have passed to a couple of times, maybe let them get a cross off. Uh, she decided to go for her for it herself. I don't mind it. Um, is it what maybe I think Coach Lukic wants to see? Maybe not, but I don't mind. I don't mind the shot at the end of the day. and clears that away just at the last minute had French bearing down on her now taken back away here by Minnesota 
Resniak will just clear that. And this game's getting pretty stretched now. Definitely some tired legs, as we've talked about before. There's the whistle, full time at TCO Stadium. 5-1 win for Minnesota. The win streak up to eight consecutive to start 2023. Aurora now eight points clear of second place Chicago City in the Heartland Division table. They suffered a scare early, went down a goal two and a half minutes for the first time all season then responded with five unanswered goals.